Okay, we are here at Trade Winds Park. We just arrived. So when you arrive to the parks, you want to make sure that you check any signs. Okay, obviously we are in Florida. So there's American alligators in fresh water. Uh, just be on the lookout, okay? Be, be aware of your surroundings, pay attention. But enjoy your day fishing, okay? We actually have some some birds out on the dock. We have an anhinga and we have a great blue heron. Okay, today we're going to set up right here, right here on the dock. Okay, we're next to the, uh, the shelter, we're next to the restrooms. We parked over there, so we didn't have to go too far today. We're gonna set up right here on the dock. Hey everyone, it's Lisa with the IGFA. We are here at Trade Winds Park in Broward County. We're going to do some freshwater fishing today. But first, we actually have to rig up our rod and reel, okay? And I'll show you how we're doing that. Today, we're using a Bass Pro Freestyle Open Faced Rod and Reel, and we'll be rigging it up with a bobber, a weight, and a circle hook. First, we're going to set up our rod. When you buy a, a fishing rod, usually it comes like this. We just have to put it together. And usually you do this at home so you're not wasting precious fishing time, okay? But today we're going to rig it out here in this nice Florida weather, okay? So first, you put the two ends together. Now, very important, you want to make sure that the guides line up, okay? So these little circles right here are called the guides or the eyes. You just want to make sure that they line up perfectly and not go crooked, okay? Let's just line them up good. Next, we have to find our fishing line. Usually it's in that little triangle right there, that little holder. Just going to pull it out. Now, very important, you don't just want to pull it out like that. You actually want to make sure it's under the bale first. So this metal ring right here is called the bale. So if I don't put the line under the bale, it will just continue to come out and that is not a good thing okay so I want to make sure that it is under the bale so that when I actually pull it, it doesn't come out okay but I do have to make sure my line goes toward the end of this rod so I am going to open the bale so that my line can come out and so that I can put my line in all of the guides all the way to the end of the rod all the way to the end don't don't forget one that might mess you up later okay. last step close the bale now we're going to put on our terminal tackle okay that so that means our bobber our weight and our hook you don't have to use a bobber you don't have to use a weight but you do have to use a hook if you actually want to catch a fish. Today, we're actually going to use all three. So what your bobber actually does is suspend your bait at a certain depth in the water. It also bobs up and down when you have a fish playing with your bait, and then it goes completely under the water when you have a fish. So bobbers do help you a lot when you go fishing. Today, we're going to use this bobber. So how you actually put it on your line I take my pointer finger, I push down the top to release that hook. Okay, so there is actually a hook down there. That's what we're going to hook it on the line. Depending on how far down I want my bait, okay, that's where I'm putting my bobber. Now you see it's only on halfway. So we, have, we actually have to put the other hook on too. So there's another hook at the top. So we're going to do the same thing, but I'm going to hold the bottom hook with my thumb and then push down the top to release that hook and then put it on the line okay you actually want it looking like that next we are going to put on our hook today we are using a circle hook circle hooks have the points going back almost creating a full circle 
okay? Circle hooks are actually safer for you as the angler and also for our fish. They are designed to go right in the side of the mouth of the fish, okay? So we love to use circle hooks and that's what we're using today. And we'll actually tie it on with a clinch knot, okay? The clinch knot, the easiest, most standard fishing knot out there. But if you don't do enough twists, your knot will just come undone when you got a fish on there and you'll lose your fish, lose your hook, and at the end you'll end up with a little curly cue in your fishing line because you did not tie a proper knot. Now to put on the hook with a clinch knot, first we insert the line into the eye of the hook and then give yourself enough slack. This tag end right here, we are actually going to twist it around the main line six to eight times. Now let me show you, if I only do it two times and put my line through, okay, when I actually pull, if I have a fish on there, it pulls, 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 and then whoops, you see that curly cue at the end? That's what we don't want because I just lost that fish, I just lost that hook, and now this is what happens because I did not tie a proper knot. We're actually going to do that clinch knot again, but get enough twists this time, six to eight twists. So put that line through the eye of the hook, take our tag end, twist it around our lead line six to eight times. Try to get seven, think of lucky number seven. Okay, so we have our twists. Now, do you see the hole in the line right by the eye of the hook? That's where we put our tag end through, right through that loop right there in the line. Now, it helps if you actually wet the line. It keeps the line cool as you pull it down. Because of friction, you actually wanna keep the line cool so it doesn't, doesn't hurt your line, make it hot, but cinch it all the way down. You see we have plenty of twists, but we actually have this tag end sticking up. Now if I go fishing with that, the tag end is just going to, you know, tickle fish in the mouth, you know, poke them in the eye. They're not going to want to bite. So what you do is you take your, your pliers or your cutters and we're going to cut that tag end off right close to the, uh, to the eye but do not throw this on the ground. We're actually going to recycle it. Now that we have attached our hook, we're actually going to attach it to our rod so that we can put our weight on. So you don't wanna actually attach the hook into the eye because that could damage the eye. So right here, this metal part is called the bridge. That is where we are going to attach the hook and so that it can't go anywhere so I can actually put on my, my weight now. So with the weight, I have a split shot. It actually looks like, a, you know, the game Pac-Man, just like that. I love using split shot weights because they can literally just bite on your line like Pac-Man, and then you take your pliers and then just pinch them shut. Now this one is actually a reusable split shot, so if I find out later I don't want to use a weight, I can actually just pinch the opposite end with my pliers and it comes off my line and I can reuse that weight. But let's put it back on because I, I do want to use the weight today. And there we have our setup right here. Hook, weight, bobber. Now that we have our rod all rigged up, now we have to put on some bait because we're getting so close to going fishing. Today, we're going to use bread. Very simple, very easy to use, and it actually will, will go a long way, okay? One slice of bread can actually last you quite a bit, if you put on the bread properly. So we took off a piece of bread. You see it right here? I'm gonna attach it to the hook. No, 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 that is not going to work. That will actually just slide off your hook. It won't, it won't work this way. So what you have to do for bread is make a bread ball. Take that piece of bread and squeeze it, okay? Squeeze it into a little bread ball. Squeeze all of the air, and then you just attach that bread ball 
onto your hook. Sometimes I squeeze it onto my hook as well. And there we go. That is all we're using today. So maybe today we'll catch a bluegill, a spotted sunfish, a red ear sunfish, maybe some non-natives like a Mayan cichlid or spotted tilapia. But let's put this in the water and actually see what we can catch today. Now remember when we cast, reel faces down, take your finger here, hold the line, take your bail, open it. Now we're on a dock, so the water is actually right here. So I can just drop it if I want to, just drop it right there in the water and close my bail. But I actually want to get it a little farther out there. So I'm going to make a little cast. So again, hold, open. Now I could bring it over my head as long as I'm looking behind me, make sure nobody's back there and then make the cast out like that. Or I can just do a, a short cast, okay? So I, I'm holding, I open my bail, I bring it back and just toss it out, okay? Always make sure, last thing, you close that bail. Now look, I have extra slack in my line right here. If I just reel it, that line will go all around my reel and it will create a bird's nest, okay? Basically a tangle. I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to take the extra slack, hold it like this, and then keep that tension and reel in that extra slack. There we go. And now I wait. I watch my bobber, I wait for that to start bobbing up and down, I wait for it to go completely under, and then I will reel in my fish. Okay, so let's see what we can catch today. We're actually going to cast along these pilings or along the vegetation right here, okay? Maybe that's where some of our bluegills are hiding. While you're waiting for that bite, take a look around. Enjoy the scenery and, and some of Florida's wildlife. Here we have an anhinga also nicknamed the snake bird because they actually go through the water. They swim through the water and they have a spear for a beak and they try to spear their fish. And that's actually how they catch uh, fish in the water. That's how they catch their breakfast and their lunch and their dinner. They do a little bit different fishing than we do. Okay, when we have your bobber going up and down, kind of bobbing like that, it tells us that a fish is down there kind of picking at the bread. So we want to make sure we keep our line tight so that when the bobber goes completely under the water, we can reel in that fish. But for now, just wait. We just had a few nibbles. Our bobber went up and down. Uh, nothing has, has happened in the last couple of seconds, 30 seconds to a minute. So every once in a while, you just want to reel up and check your bait, see if it's still on there. Ah, uh, no, they, they took our bait. Okay, so we're gonna ha going to have to put on a new bread ball, cast it back out there, and see if we can actually catch that fish this time. Okay, let's, let's see what happens. Okay, we're still waiting, still waiting to catch that first fish. But it is Florida, it's hot, it's sunny. So make sure we have a face shield. Um, this can act like a mask. It also protects your face from the sun. And then please make sure that we stay hydrated, okay? You need to drink plenty of water, stay hydrated, but it's best to bring a reusable water bottle so that we don't have to add more plastic pollution out into the environment. So I like to bring my, my Costa water bottle so that we can make sure we kick plastic Okay, so I'm actually going to get a drink and uh, make sure I stay hydrated too and protected from the sun. How we go fishing uh, and how we're waiting for that fish to bite. Take a look around. Enjoy the scenery, but also if you notice some trash or some pollution in the water or on the ground, 
And if it's safe and if it's if your parents say it's okay to, to clean up our environment, especially if there's some trash in the water, then let, let's try to do that, okay? We want to leave our fishing spot cleaner than when we actually came here uh, to go fishing, okay? So I checked my surroundings. I am okay. I'm just going to reach down. We got a huge, huge garbage bag here. So take a look at that. This has been in the water for a very long time. We see some algae growing on it. And luckily for us, there's actually some garbage cans in the pavilion next to us. So I'm actually going to go walk over. I'm going to reel in um, because you don't want to leave your rod with your bait in the water and you not attached to it. We have seen one too many times uh, with our campers or during fishing clinics that actually they leave the rod with their bait in the water and then the fish hooks up on it and pulls the rod in the water. Okay, we don't want to do that. So I'm just going to reel up. Actually, I lost my bait again. Okay, reel up, attach my hook, and then I'm going to go walk this over to the trash. A good place to cast is right on the edge of that vegetation. See, we're already getting some bites. Okay, and we're actually getting taken by a fish. Oh, they weren't on yet. Let your bobber go completely under the water. But right on the edge of that vegetation is a good spot because it's a hot sunny day, so fish are going to be going under there for some shelter. Oh, I think we may have lost our, yep, we lost our bread. One thing with bread, you wanna make sure you actually keep it in the shade because when you go to take off another, uh, another bread ball, it can't really, it just crumbles, okay? So if you keep it out in the sun, it literally just crumbles on you. So you wanna make sure you keep it in the shade and kind of keep it a little wet. Woohoo! All right, success! We caught a fish! Let's see what we have. We actually have a bluegill, okay? You can actually see there's a little blue right here on the gill. A bluegill is a very common native fish here in Florida. It's not the biggest of catches that we could catch today, but a fish is a fish no matter how big it is, okay? And the reason why I'm keeping it in the water is because fish breathe in the water with their gills, okay? So as I do my instruction, I just wanna keep my fish in the water, okay? But let's actually release this fish. We're just doing catch and release today. So let me show you how to release it with a de-hooking tool, okay? I don't wanna to touch the fish with my hands because I don't wanna remove the slime. And also, bluegills have very sharp spines on their fins, okay? So we actually wanna make sure we are careful and that we don't take off too much slime on the fish. So I use a de-hooking tool when I go fishing. How you use that is you get it on the back of the hook lean over the water and now i'm just going to take my de-hooking tool up and my fishing line down and just rotate 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 bye bye bluegill all right let's keep fishing okay we're about to call it quits because the sun is getting to be high noon it's really hot out here i ran out of water I'm hungry, so maybe I'll go back and get some lunch now. Um, but I just want to really quickly talk about that bluegill that we caught. So yay, we actually caught a fish today here in beautiful Tradewinds Park in Broward County, Florida. A beautiful freshwater park that you and your family can come, have a picnic, social distance, do some fishing, and have some fun. So here we have our freshwater regulations, and in the middle, we actually have all of our freshwater fish that we have here in Florida. And what's cool is you actually see pictures of it. So how I know it was a bluegill was it had that, that blue on its operculum right here on its gill. And it's very similar to a red ear sunfish. Um, we got a warmouth, a spotted sunfish. These are native uh, freshwater fish that we have here in Florida. And we got to catch one today. So all of these fish here are actually considered panfish. 
okay because they're about the size of a pan if you go if you take it home and then and, and cook it up for uh, for lunch or dinner or something um, in our regulations though we can keep up to 50 pan fish in one day five zero fifty and that can be a mix of all of those fish we just uh, discussed but do you have to keep 50 in one day no can you keep one or two yeah can you practice catching and release like we did today? Oh yeah. Can you have fun while doing any of those things? Oh yeah, fishing is fun. So make sure you and your family come out to our, our natural areas here in Broward County, Florida, in all sorts of different counties of Florida, and make sure you have fun while fishing. Until next time, when we fish Florida.